Uh, good afternoon, all. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Jason Beal. I work with Ingram Migro and here representing uh, SNEA Europe's Board of Directors. It's my pleasure to introduce the next keynote for the afternoon, Rob Jenkins, who's the Director of Advisory Services with Ingram Migro, excuse me, with VMware EMEA. Rob has been with VMware for over six years working personally with some of the largest enterprise orga IT organizations in the world. He has over a 20-year career in the IT industry, working in a variety of roles from software development to uh, startup to business and sales management. And he's going to really talk today about how businesses can use IT and an agile IT infrastructure to create a, a tool that the business can use for competitive advantage, to win business, and to take costs out of the company. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Rob Jenkins. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, 20 years, man. How to make someone feel old. So, excuse me, I'll find somewhere to put some water without it tipping all over the place. All right, so... Um, Thanks for joining today. Uh, I am Rob Jenkins. You can follow me on uh, Twitter, cloud underscore Rob. I have been with VMware for a while now, and uh, I can tell you that in VMware years, five, five and a half, six years, ten years is, uh, is quite long. Um, I think I've been there as long as, uh, or longer than 85% of the current people at VMware. Um, so I run a team called Advisory Services. Um, effectively, we engage with the largest enterprise customers and try and help them relate their business goals to uh, an IT strategy. So I'm going to talk about these themes. Um, I don't think they're particularly new themes. Um, you'll, you'll have seen other people talking about similar things at other conferences. Um, the point I'm really going to try and dig into is... Um, I think the acceptance of technology is that, that technology can help us build a new way of delivering an IT infrastructure that's agile and um, more responsive and scalable. I, I think there's an acceptance that, that that's the case. Um, and I'm certainly going to talk about some references later on in the talk, um, a couple of well-known brands who've, who've derived value from a new way of delivering IT. Um, what I want to dig into is exactly what it is that one needs to do in order to capture that value. And so the analogy is, is thinking, well, if you can build this you know, all-encompassing flexible IT infrastructure um, or way of delivering IT services, that doesn't in and of itself mean that you'll get business value from it. You know, I can give anyone a, a shiny new tool of the newest sort but if they don't know how to use it or don't think about how to use it or um, you know, deliberately use it in a way that derives business value, then, then of course they won't. So it's going to add something you, you know, to this potential, I guess. There's the potential on the slide there. We're going to explore uh, how one derives that potential. So clearly the expectations of users and of, of IT has changed. Right? Um, and the rate of change has accelerated, continues to accelerate. Um, and I just wanted to pause a minute and think about the true scope of, over which that's changed. Okay? It doesn't really matter whether you start on the bottom here with the way that IT architecture and infrastructure has evolved so that you can have flexible, virtualized infrastructure or go to a cloud and, and get infrastructure on demand and work your way up through that stack there, or whether you start at the top and say what's really driving change in IT is users' expectations. You know, I'm sure if we did a straw poll here and I asked everyone to hold up all of the devices that they had with them or at home, you know, we'd all recognize the fact that we access IT in different ways on different devices anywhere, anytime. So, so kind of clearly between the the capability to derive services through different form factors, through different devices, anywhere, anytime, the expectations we have and the capabilities that are on offer from applications um, you know, that, can, that know about where we are, that have context in the data, that have you know, low latency messaging between 
disparate data sources so that when you use an application, it knows who you are, it knows what you've done, it knows where you've been, it knows the device you're using, and so on. You know, those expectations and those applications are supporting what ultimately is driving this expectation of change, which is our new way of working and our new work style. I mean, I, I don't think many people expect to go to the same office, to the same desk, use the same computer every day of their working lives anymore. Um, I, I certainly don't. Um, you know, that's something I guess we would recognise. So, of course, you know, traditionally IT, it's particularly in larger companies, is forced to concentrate on just keeping the lights on and making this brittle infrastructure that they've built work. And if you look at the data, um, you know, many companies say they spend up to 95% of their IT budget just maintaining what they've already built. You know, I spoke to a CIO the other day who has a $300 million a year budget. You know, it's a pretty substantial organization, and he confirmed he literally spends 95% of that on just maintaining the status quo. So wh where do we go from there, right? The cloud clearly gives us the ability to derive um, lower uh, IT services at a lower cost and with less latent latency. Here's some figures here. Bear with me on some of these charts. I've got some statistics on charts that I'll talk through briefly, um, but if you want, you can just look at, I've deliberately left long titles at the top, which encapsulate the main point. So, fundamentally, if you deploy a cloud model, be it all completely private cloud or completely public cloud, or the most cost-effective model, a, a combination of the two, where you get the best of both worlds, you, know, you can drive out 24% on average cost savings on, on uh, just delivering your IT. So this is comparing, you know, this is 100%, you know, what you're doing now inter uh, internally with legacy IT, and this is the relative costs that we estimate um, through various data sources of, of deploying through different cloud models. So, there we go. We've got the potential from cloud to drive out some savings in the way we um, deliver IT, which is great. That's important to know. Um, dig a little further into that, though, and um, it's quite interesting to note, this is some work that was done by McKinsey recently. It's interesting to note that there's no real correlation between business performance, in this case operating margin, um, and IT spending as a percentage of revenue. So I think this is quite profound, this slide. It, what it says is you can't gain business value, you can't gain business advantage just by spending more on IT, just by you know, having newer, brighter, shinier IT. And what's interesting is if you pick a particular industry, and, and they did it for banking and other industries, you zoom in and you see the same pattern. So, so what's going on here? What, um, what you could say is, if you look at the title, is, of course, in order to compete, you're going to need competitive IT, but that's just the table stakes, right? Just, that's what you have to pay just to be in the game. All right? It doesn't, in and of itself, mean that you're going to get business advantage. So what's the reasoning behind some of this? Well, one interesting or, or an interesting thing that McKinsey derived was um, looking at how it is that we actually derive value from IT. And, you know, everyone will recognize these use cases here. And the point that um, comes out of this data is we've captured a lot of the value from these IT use cases already. You know, some of these things we've been driving for the last 30 or 40 years. So look at that statistic there on, you know, reducing the number of transactional workers or driving out the benefits of automation. You know, a lot of that's already been captured. Um, of course, we all like to think that as individuals we become more productive when we have new services and new devices, but there comes a point at which you're reaching the limits of how productive or how much you can increase productivity. And, you know, to a degree, there aren't many computing problems, especially with cloud computing available, that you can't solve by throwing bulk compute resource at, right? You know, clearly there are edge cases, but the point of the slide is, if you think about those traditional IT use cases, you, you know, we've extracted a fair amount of value out of those already. 
However, business leaders still expect cloud computing to increase the flexibility and responsiveness of IT. So how is that going to derive more business value if what we've just said is we've kind of squeezed the sponge pretty hard already, right? So what we've done here is try to break out some ways which generically IT can derive business value for an organization. And I've tried to illustrate them with some examples. Now, all of the examples down the right-hand side are all Amazon examples. I've just done that just to be consistent. I mean, clearly, they're not the only company that is generating business value out of IT. But they are a really good example of a company who has transformed business models and driven, IT, driven value in a different way and, and captured your market. So let's just, I'm not going to read all of these out, but, you know, pick a couple of examples. Changing the cost of inputs to a business. Think about what Amazon has done. They fundamentally changed the way that the, the efficiency of, an, uh, of a supply chain to get goods from the purchaser to the supplier. Okay? Um, you know, they've invented new markets. They've invented new ways of monetizing something. I like this example at the bottom, serving an unserved market in a new way. Um, you know, Amazon have created a single aggregated marketplace for out-of-print books. You know, that's quite, in a lot of ways, that seems like quite an old-school, um, non-traditional you know, market. Yet yeah, Amazon has used IT and the roll-up effect of everything it's done to create that new marketplace. Okay, so I won't labor the point, but hopefully you see here there's five different ways that IT can deliver value to a business, and they're all a little bit different to the previous use cases we were talking about. And so this slide is just a map between the two. Effectively, to gain value from you know, this new IT that you can build and enable, you need to figure out not how do you automate more labor, but how do you help your business create new business models? Not how do you make the individual person more productive, but how do you get teams, corporations um, to be more productive and interact together? And you know, maybe not what's the computing problem that you can solve with raw compute, but perhaps more how can you make a product cheaper or, or, or make a product digital only and, and thereby, you know, kind of re revolutionize it. So actually, I meant to mention that. You know, AdWords is a great example. Um, you know, if you go onto a website and you can't find the product, the AdWords automatically know what you're looking for and connect you to someone that sells it. So you know, the vendor's kind of getting paid for the stuff that they sell you, and then they're also making money out of pointing you to someone that sells something that they don't sell. So, you know, again, a completely different way of monetizing a, a service. This slide is the most important for me in this whole presentation. This, this illustrates the point that I made at the beginning. If all companies could build an equally agile, flexible IT system, then again, you know, the table stakes have just been raised. As we've seen, the spend on IT doesn't correlate directly to shareholder value. This is um, a summary of research, again, by McKinsey, where what they did was say, well, what does IT spend, uh, sorry, shareholder value correlate to in terms of IT? What they did was generate a thing called uh, Innovation Sentiment Score. So it, it talks about it a little bit down here, but um, effectively they did data mining of, of the internet, of blogs, of web posts, of forums, all this kind of thing, and looked for the way that innovation or innovative, those words were associated with a company. And their logic is that if over the huge scale of the internet, generally sentiment is that a company is innovative, um, then it probably is a pretty good measure of whether it's innovative. You know, not looking at whether a company thinks itself is, is innovative. So what they found is that there is a direct correlation between total return to shareholders, so company performance, and how innovative um, 
the internet believes that a company is. So that, I think, you know, maybe you could argue it isn't a direct link, but I think it, it's fairly safe to assume that if a company is perceived as being innovative and is innovative, then they're finding innovative ways to use IT to drive business value. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So, how does one, what do you do about all of this, right? So, clearly the first step is, you know, table stakes. You need to develop an architect, uh, an IT infrastructure that um, provides you the opportunity to, to do what those innovative, com innovative companies have done. So, you need the flexible uh, architecture. You need to engineer your architecture in a way that you can gather insight from data across multiple BUs, for example. Um, the key insights into data and the way that, you know, some of those examples I showed earlier, Amazon, for example, the way they derive value is using data that they gather from lots of different applications and lots of different routes into a customer, aggregating that together and getting some kind of collective insight into what you might do. Um, you know, and, and clearly, as you build this infrastructure, as you build this new way of delivering IT, whether it's internally or externally, um, you need to have a model where the different parts of your solution can be independent of, of each other. If you, if you build a solution that's just one kind of static stack, um, you're always going to run into the challenge that you may not be getting best of class for a particular level in your stack. So that's important too. So some of the things to think about, if you think about those drivers for change is, you know, clearly think about delivering or building a flexible, scalable infrastructure for all applications that can be internal or can scale externally to an ecosystem of cloud providers. Clearly think about the way that applications are developed and applications are deployed. So, you know, modern applications need you know, disparate data management, low latency messaging, all these kinds of services. Um, and think about ways that you empower a workforce so that it's secure through any device, any time, centrally managed, um, and, and so on. So those are kind of three components, and that's certainly where VMware is kind of investing time in developing solutions. I said I'd talk about a couple of examples. Um, I like these examples because they are illustrations of how people have derived business value from transformation in IT beyond cost saving. Okay? You know, currently 50 to 60 percent of x86 workloads in the world are virtualized. In a couple of years' time, that will be 75 percent. You know, more and more of the fabric of the data center is being virtualized. The The core value proposition of virtualization is, is aggregation of resource and consolidation and capex savings. So how do you derive value beyond capex savings is, is the essence of these examples. So Sega games, hopefully most people have heard of them. They do the Sonic the Hedgehog game is the most famous. They used to do their testing in-house, in um, testing bloats up the resource demands as you get towards the end of a game development cycle. Game development cycles are usually very time critical. You're usually trying to get a game out by Christmas or whatever the release date might be. They used to have to let third-party testers in through their firewall and give them some infrastructure to do their testing on. They don't do that now. They have uh, infrastructure in a, in a hybrid cloud model that they can push out to a cloud provider, Colt in this case, Testers only have access to that limited piece of infrastructure, so they've reduced their risk, um, protected their brand more. Um, because they can scale up that infrastructure on demand as it reaches the peak of, of games release, um, they've actually been able to reduce their testing time. By reducing their testing time by 20%, they've added in testing cycles, so now they're able to increase the quality of the product because they're able to do more testing. They're still getting their product to market some, something like 17% earlier. Product to market quicker translates directly into market capture for them because they're first to market. So 
you know, it's easy to think, oh, this is just a cost consolidation story. It isn't at all. Obviously, they save costs because they're only paying for infrastructure for peak demand, and then they don't pay for it when peak has died down. Um, you know, they protected their brand and reduced their risk and increased their quality and reduced their time to market. Beyond that, they're taking on one of the tenets of the new ways of using IT that I mentioned in an earlier slide, whereby they're monetizing um, the games market in a different way. They're re reducing the complexity of their supply chain and so on, and they will supply games online now. And so they'll be able to put a game up online. They won't ship digital media all over the place as they're used to. Peak demand for that game will grow and they'll have infrastructure in a public cloud provider which allows them to meet that demand and then as demand for the game drops down they, they reduce their costs accordingly. Next example I've picked is um, deliberately a completely different use case. Oxford University, you know, one of the most famous brands in the world I would say certainly in uh, higher education. They have hundreds or thousands of researchers that all need databases. Um, historically, that was all done in a rather ad hoc manner. Um, much of their research is publicly funded, so they're actually duty-bound and have compliance requirements to make some of that data available um, for a certain time uh, after, the after the research is completed. So in essence, they set up a database as a service, um, service managed centrally by Oxford but using a third-party cloud provider, again, Colt in this example, um, to, to scale up. So they've improved their security because that's all, all the resources managed just for that user. They've reduced their risk because they're managing their data availability in a compliant way. Um, they've improved the quality of services for researchers, thereby attracting more researchers to come to the university in a competitive market. And, of course, they protected their brand by incre increasing their security. So, again, completely different business value, um, but, again, trying to kind of shorten the supply chain for services, for example. So, I, I talked at the beginning about the fact that um, we're going to really think about, you know, if you can build this technology, this uh, flexible, agile infrastructure, what does it take to capture the value from that? Well, of course, everyone talks about technology, people and process. That's the typical three things that you think about having to put in place to transform the way you do something. Um, and indeed, that's important. On top of that, though, we're layering on this concept of IT business management. So if you think about an example, as you virtualize your infrastructure, you drive out cost, um, but you still have lots of people managing that infrastructure. As you automate, the more you automate, the more you can free up resources to go do some of those innovative things that we were talking about the, the need to do, to think about how you apply this new tool in an innovative way. So... As you free up that cost, as you free up the operational cost of people, you need to capture that. You need to capture the fact that your operational costs have dropped and you have an operational budget to redeploy. As you become a broker and you begin to um, derive services for the business from third parties, take a requirement, figure out the best way to deliver that service internally or externally, again, you need to manage those services and compare those services via an SLA and then maybe be able to charge back the business internally. So all of these things start to speak to the ability to manage, compare, manage services at a business level um, through a suite of IT business management um, requirements and tools. So circle background. I think you know, it's absolutely clear that a business-aligned IT strategy can create a competitive edge. You know, flip it around the other way, what business growth innovation can you think of in, in the company that you work for that won't require some input from IT? So if you don't have that aligned, that IT strategy aligned with what the business is trying to do, you, you know, clearly it's going to be very difficult to derive a competitive edge. You know, so le 
logically from that, you know, we're, we're agreeing that IT business value is not just about cost saving. You know, there's a good statistic from, from one of the bits of data earlier that says if you consider the lowest performing organizations in, in any industry, if they could improve their IT services and, you know, get the cost of their IT to be the same and the performance of IT to be the same as the, um, the median performers in their industry, the best they can do is get between 1% and 2% increase in operating margin. So that's quite a long explanation of, of a point, but the point is no one ever saved themselves to greatness, right? You can... You, you, you can derive cost savings, you can d deliver your IT in a, in a cheaper way, and that's great, and you should do it, but it, it, it of itself is not going to derive competitive value for a company. So what derives competitive value is finding new ways to generate revenue, finding new ways to improve your market share or market perception. So to this final point, which I'm sure, well, which I hope no one would have agreed with at the beginning, that CIOs can become value creators. Of course, CIOs can become value creators, but I think it's more than just thinking, okay, I'm a CIO. If I build a flexible new infrastructure and a really flexible way of delivering IT to the business, that is going to derive business value, because probably it isn't. Right? There's lots of things that you have to do to build the infrastructure, to change the people, to change the process, to make that capability available to the business. But I think there's a step beyond that where the CIO needs to become the business partner that really understands what the business is trying to do and takes an active role in leading that innovation and frees up people in his organization to help with that you know, non-trivial exercise saying how do we create new use cases for IT? What is it that IT could really do that derives business value, that takes this shiny tool that we've, used, we've, we've developed and applies it in a way that helps the business? Okay, so that's it. We've got probably a couple of minutes if anyone's got any questions. I'll, I'll be here um, or we have a booth if you want to talk to anyone from VMware. Thank you very much. <laughs>